is uh, about a hundred year old willow. So I'm not just taking a stab at that. I cut one <clears throat> a little bit smaller than this in this area and uh, counted the rings. All these willows along the river here in northern Alberta seem to be kind of dying out. The maple's taken over for whatever reason. Such is life. it's been about a decade or 10 years since I've since I've made a YouTube video there's some in there but uh, you know in the old days I used to take you out in the wild mushroom harvest with the crew for morels and stuff like that and then after a while I just kind of after chronology uh, after making all those videos and taking you, you guys with me, I kind of felt like I wanted to be more present with what I was doing in the bush. So that meant not messing around with camera gear or doing things for the camera. And I've been enjoying that. <clears throat> but as you get older, at least as I get older, I can tell there's a real thirst out there for the knowledge that I have. And <clears throat> I want to share as much as I can um, to help create things that I value, like independence and self-reliance and so I'm going to get into uh, teaching people probably through the business, through Untamed Feast, courses on, you know, survival and being in harmony with nature and kind of what that really means, at least to me. There's a proverb somewhere in the Bible. I remember my dad talking about, <clears throat> and it's like, uh, it's, it's kind of like, don't worry, everything's going to be provided. And nature provides so much to us. We actually have very little needs. We create a lot of our needs, obviously. So the proverb is something like, observe the fowls of the air. And, you know, they just know where their next meal is coming from. Or they don't worry about it. They just kind of assume when they wake up, the next day it's going to be there. And it's like... The uh, <clears throat> the animals and whatnot, you know, they don't they don't sweat it basically. So you shouldn't either. The fishes of the sea. Hey, buds. Oh yeah, you got your little your cute little coat on, huh? There's a big porcupine in a tree over there, which I've seen out here before, and uh, we've been trying to do a little lessons on not go near porcupines. <laughs> but we're still very interested. We can smell it, but we don't know where it is. Anyway, we should start a fire. <clears throat> you, mister, will have to excuse us. Um, maybe we can start a fire with a hand drill. Oh, not if we drop them in the snow. We won't be. Got some chaga here. This wasn't actually... My plan today, my plan was definitely to come out here and <clears throat> build a little fire, roast a sausage, 
make a tea. <clears throat> Excuse me. <coughs> but uh, since I'm here, maybe we can get a hand fire going. It's kind of one of the things I'd like to teach, you know, all the various ways you can make fire. Uh, it really inspires me anyway. And whenever I teach it to just someone, they're always thrilled. You can start a fire a lot of different ways. This is getting pretty Stone Age, you know. Um, start fires with batteries and say the world ends tomorrow you don't have to know how to make a hand drill fire you got a couple years before the matches and Bix <coughs> Bic lighters run out and then after that you got batteries and steel wool and car batteries and <clears throat> on sunny days you know you can use water bottles to make magnifying glasses essentially but doing the hand drill fire is always fun and impressive everything's got to be bone dry but I'll tell you what no matter what kind of fire you're making It's all about prepared for when you get that first coal going. So <clears throat> you can have <clears throat> the greatest coal in a piece of chaga or maybe from flint and steel or whatever in the world. But if you don't have all your little tiny sticks gathered and your grass and whatever to slowly get that fire going up to a real fire, you were not prepared to make the fire. All right. Normally I take my shoes off for this, but uh, let's see what we got for preparation. We got some grass. It's not super dry, but it'll probably work. We got some small kindling. This willow stuff doesn't burn amazingly well. It kind of smokes. I'm going to smoke some bacon with it. We'll get some little sticks out of it. And like, just have some things ready, you know. There we go. Nature providing. <clears throat> I have no idea if the sound quality or the visual quality on this is terrible or great or what. Let's see what we can do. I think I'll sit on that wood. Yeah, that's, that's super comfy. Super comfy. All right. I'm a little awkward. Let's see. Let's see if I can hold it steady. Nope, not very good. <clears throat> so yeah, I mean, end of the world, and then a few years later, the matches run out, and the. <clears throat> Bic lighters are all gone, and then you can use a car battery and a piece of wire and bottle, all these different things you can use until you actually need to get to this point, <clears throat> the stone ageness. Now, a piece of chaga, mushroom that grows on a birch tree in northern parts of the world, it's got to be a bit soft not too soft. If it's too hard, you won't be able to maintain a coal, which might happen here. This piece is a bit firm. Or, if it's too soft, you just drill right through it. So I've warmed it up now. I'm kind of pressing down with my hands. 
and then I'll give it a little bit of and there was that smoke coming that doesn't mean stop and I kind of leave it in there and slowly take it out and then we may have a cold go or there might just be too much humidity in the air yeah so that didn't take so we have to do it again you might have to even select another piece of chaga you can see the idea that you know I'm kind of pressing down and twisting I'm building up some heat before I even before I even go bananas, you know? Because you can't keep up this pace. Ah, oh, shucks. You can't keep up that pace. All day long. We're really gonna get this smoking this time. That looks like it's taking. Maybe. The piece is a bit firm. Nope, nothing there. <clears throat> well, I mean, that's just how it is. Lots of smoke. I say where there's smoke, there's fire, but that is not always the case. Oh, it wants to, but but it doesn't want to. So close. All right. See, I cut myself with the axe there. Now, I've done this winter camping at 30 below, 40 below. It's actually a little bit easier to get a fire going because there's no humidity. Well, it's going to make for a boring video if I do this all day. So, I guess I could speak more about what I want to accomplish by getting back on YouTube. I think you get it. I want to teach you about the plants. I want to teach you about communing. With the oneness of the universe and how being out here in silence is healing and terrifying and wonderful and painful and that you 
it probably all comes down to community. You don't survive alone, ultimately. So if you want a community, I know I do. Grab onto something. Just a bit too hard of a piece. A bit too hard of a piece. It's, of course, middle of March. Middle of March, northern Alberta. Not too far from Edmonton. And actually, I can hear some traffic. I don't know if you can. I'm not that far out of city limits. You can find cool places that nobody goes. It's pretty easy. Bicks. That old Bic lighter is starting to look pretty good now. All smoke and no action. Try to drop a little bit of the dust that's on the edge of it inside there. This one looks the most promising so far, honestly. With these hard pieces, if you do get a coal, you kind of got to blow on it before it goes out. If you blow on it too soon, you just blow it out. Still sort of still kind of going, but oh yeah, feeding it a little air. That smoke changed to from kind of a gray to a blue now. So that usually means that the magic is good. Still not going great guns though. We're good. We're good. Oops. So I just take a little piece of chaga here, put it down in the hole. Get it burning on a new little piece. So now I could just use this piece for my fire and put this out. 
but this piece is a bit small to put in your bird's nest. Guess I could come a little bit closer, kind of show you. So your bird's nest is just, you know, just some grass. And you kind of make a taco. Interesting, the big one went out. Needs some help. So we're going to give it some help. Crumble in some chaga there. Time is on our side, right? Like it's a nice day. Don't panic. Panicking is bad. Right, Finnegan? Finn? Oh, good boy. Good boy. Ah, good boy. Just didn't want you chasing that porcupine. I don't see him in that tree anymore. So at this point, you could relax and you could gather some more little twigs and stuff. You know, I'm just making a little chaga dust in the bottom of the bird's nest here. And then this chaga we have left over. want a little bit more dead twigs. Here we go. And when you see these bushmen blowing the fire into life, like you've probably seen me do actually, that's all really well and good. You basically you're folding the taco over, you're blowing into it. Um, you could also just put it on the ground and put some more grass over top of it and blow it into a fire. You don't have to blow it here because you need to singe your eyebrows. You kind of have to um, move the grass a little bit with your fingers also to make sure there's contact between the, the chaga that's making coals and the grass. And this grass is damp, so it'll take a bit, but It'll go. Oh, that's some damp grass, all right. We had a little bit of snow a couple days ago, or yesterday, I guess. I find this, uh, this willow, it burns quite interesting, this old dead willow. It, uh, it goes out pretty easy and smolders. And some people say it's stinky and they don't like it. I really quite like it, actually. Remember years ago, a buddy's dad saying, oh yeah, you don't smoke fish or meat with willow unless you peel the bark, because it'll give you the runs. Um, but just, you know... I'm going to take some pieces like this and I'm curing a bacon and I'll smoke it and see what happens. I kind of like the smell. So 
yeah, it's not, it's not amazing kindling, you know. Questionable. This here is a piece of pitch wood, which is from the bottom of a pine tree. You know, after a pine tree dies, gravity in the sap all goes down into those old roots. And 10 or 20 years later, in a old dead stump, if you know what you're looking for, you can find this really resin heavy pitch wood. A couple shavings of this and a Bic lighter and you're off to the races too. Dad always had pitch wood on him and thus do I. R.I.P. Sam Whitehead. Now there was a bushman. And a bush woman, my mom. Decided to go squat in the mountains in the middle of nowhere in their 20s and eked it out up in the mountains for a bit. And Eventually bought some land from a farmer and paid it off and raised us kids on moose meat and organic veggies. Mum grew everything, baked all the bread, did untold amounts of work and same with dad. Cleared the land, grew crops. Us kids ran around and filled up mason jars full of clover blossoms, right Sally? Our wonderful sister. We had to do that kind of stuff. So a real blessing. I like, I'm like thankful every night before I close my little eyes for the way I was brought up by my mom and dad, even Sam. That's my phone ringing. It's my lovely wife and business partner and brains behind the fact that I've got some time and luxury to do things like this and not just slave away. I couldn't do couldn't do any of it without her. Not just the business, but life. The raising of our wonderful daughter, Mila. <laughs> Gotta have a good partner, and I do. Someone that supports you to grow to the things you need to do and someone that uh, you can be there for also someone that loves you for who you are not just your possible potential I mean, there's nothing wrong with a bit of potential but um, I guess it's turning into philosophy whatever I've got a good mate I hope you guys have one or find one. Mate. Mate, partner, lover, confidant, friend. So you can see the willow. It it like burns quite slowly. It's it's not obtrusive. It's not in your face. Just kind of like, yeah, I'm a little fire. I'm a little fire. I'm over here. I'm not going completely out on you, but I'm not going to exactly like take over the world. And I think the smoke is beautiful. Doesn't seem to even make my eyes sting. In fact, this little axe in my day pack that my friend Darcy gave to me. Thanks, Darcy. It's uh, it's handy for little stuff like this gets you out of a pinch if you need to cut some wood I mean most of the time if you're up in the mountains or wherever you are there's enough sticks for a fire but where this is handy is let's say you've got to whittle yourself a, a bow or a, a fish bonker or a, the hammer aspect of this is the biggest reason I carry it around actually I carry around some nails and um, if you need to build something a raft a door uh, a structure of any kind um, having some nails is incredibly handy I mean you can pack a ton bunch of paracord and I do too 
But this is your kind of little axe hammer. He must be sitting in the sun somewhere. I'm going to grill up some sausage on this fire. And I'm going to have a root beer. I don't normally drink stuff like that. Oh, I do have this tea. I love this clay, this clay bowl that I made from Alberta clay. And some tea. It's called mountain tea. They drink it all over Greece and other places in Europe probably too. It's kind of sage-like, but better. I melt some snow in here. Uh. All right, well, I should probably take you over. We could look at this porcupine, but is he still up there? You guys just watch the fire for a sec. I'm gonna look. Porcupine's still up in that big old willow over there. I'm not actually going to take you over there though. Nothing personal. This is a knife I made. This is bandsaw blade. Used to make some knives when I was a kid with dad. Bandsaw blade is like these big blade that are bands for big sawmills. So it's actually quite stiff. It's just not stiff when it's, you know, 30 feet around. And it's kind of a nice thickness and you can work with it. This is juniper handle from out in the Chilcotin. <clears throat> Hello, any Chilcotin friends and old time acquaintances. This is an old shoe, a piece of an old shoe I found in the mountains. This actually belonged to a fellow named Ben Dane. It was his old mountain goat watching cabin up in Hidden Valley where I found this old rotten boot and I needed a sheath. So there it is. Sausage stick. Um. You know, it really annoys me, or I used to, watching YouTube videos and be like, don't forget to hit that thumbs up, and that like button, and that, hit that like, that bell, that sub, whatever. But, uh, now I kind of get it. If I want to help people, and I genuinely do, if I want to help people and help humanity by being more in touch with nature, less in your car, less on your phone, less whatever and more of this, then in order for that to get out to other people in the world, you do have to like, share, subscribe, whatever that stuff is, because otherwise the algorithm stuff doesn't pick it up and then I don't have as much of an audience and then less people see it and we can, I can affect less of a change in the world. I don't know what kind of change that's going to be. Just, I, I think I'd like to work with youth at risk. I, I'd like to work with uh, run-of-the-mill regular people that want to reconnect with nature, be outside, have that feeling like, wow, there's so much here. It's, it's kind of all here. But balanced with like, you're out here and you get sick and then the miracle of antibiotics and you're better within 24 hours, you know? Not just crazy 
100% back to the land. Um, there's balance and there's, there's goodness in many things. Goodness in many things. Let's see if she cracks and wrecks or if it works nicely. I think I'll move this whole setup in closer now. Where'd you go, Finnegan? Oh, I hear a chopper. Finnegan! Oh, good boy. You're right there. Okay. Maybe they saw... A little bit of smoke and they're off to investigate and I doubt it. You know what a guy needs, which I didn't bring. I did think about it, a, a ground sheet. Come here, Finn. Let's fix this. Come here. Come here. Yeah. Just come here. Let's fix this little dog thing. Oh, that's tricky, hey? There we go, bud. There we go. That's better. That's better, right? Yeah. Mm, that big porcupine is still up in that tree. You're a good boy, Finn. You're a good boy. You're a good bush friend. This little rescue dog. I tell you what, he's tough, man. He'll he'll go like all day in the alpine, all day with you. Well, that is not exactly working that quickly, is it? We're going to cook you up a sausage, baby. and we're going to cook me up a sausage. Sausages for everybody. And you're not going to eat it raw, though. You're going to have to wait for it to be cooked, little dude. You're keen on that idea, are you? are keen on that idea. Well, that's a smoky. We'll get her fired up a little better here.
see what I mean with that wood, eh? It's like, almost like perfect for smoking. 